Greetings friend, I will show you how Scott Strossel solved this extreme Sudoku and the significance of these colored cells. I'll also cover what he did well and what he missed through my positive video on what if moments. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing he did is he noticed that you could put a three right here because you got this three cutting across and this three coming down. And just a note, if you're doing this in Hidoku and you put it in there, it will show the puzzle as being invalid until you put this three right here. So put the three in here when you're making it and then hit uh, start and you'll be fine. Not sure why it does that. And also fun fact, the minimum number of givens in a Sudoku puzzle is 17. And that's what this puzzle has. You add this three and make 18, you're good to go. Okay, after doing that three, he notices you got these two sevens here, only one place for seven up high, marks that. And then with the seven right here, only one place for seven in block eight. Most of the actions here in block eight. So you can see you have the six and the eight right there. That means this cell has to be a nine, which allows us to have a six, eight pair right there. Then he starts looking for some by value cells. He notices there's a lot of cells looking into row seven, column seven. So he puts a four, five right there. Uh, then he kind of comes up column four, which is what I would do. I'd look to where there's at least four cells in the house and notices that this cell is actually a naked single. It can't be a one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, or a nine. So it's got to be a four. He puts the four right there. Uh, then he marks a one, five, seven in to finish that column. So at this point, there's really not much else to look for. You got to get to that band strategy. So Strozo looks here at row seven and notices you got a one, two, four, five going on there. Cleans that up. And then he's like, there's a lot going on with these ones and fives. You know, I got a five and a one here, I got five and a one here, I got this one five here. And so he starts looking and he finds a hidden pair of fives and ones. So this is our first pause the video moment. Pause the video and see if you can find a hidden pair in one of these rows. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. And it will be a hidden pair of one five okay congratulations you found it you're an expert at finding hidden pairs for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it's in row five right there it's the only place you can have a one to five because you got this one five here and you got this one five here and the one five right there all right you start looking at that a little bit more he adds some snyder marks he goes there's the only restrictions i got going on are with these ones and fives how do they interact and he does something pretty cool here he says, I got the one five here, one five here. I have two places for a one in row seven. I have two places for a five in row seven. Whatever's in here, it seems to affect what's in row seven, which also affects what's up in here in block three. So he's like, if this is a one, eliminates a one from there, this has to be a one. Now you pair with this one and this one, this cell would have to be a one. And then with this one, as one would have to be right here. So if this is a one, that's a one. If it's a five, you eliminate the five from there. This is a five, pair with that five and this five. This has to be a five. And with these two fives, this cell would be a five. He figures out this cell has to be the same as that cell. And so he colors them green. He says, okay, what can I do with that? Well, what I'll know then is if this is green, you know, and this is green, then where can a whatever that value is one or five where can that be here in block two you know it can't be in these cells can't be here gotta be in one of these two cells well it can't be here because it the green's already in the row so this has to also be green and then he says well if this is the same value then this would be the opposite value so he colors that purple and this is great stuff because what strosel used to get to this part is coloring and when he realizes is that whenever you do coloring like this and alternating the ones and the fives then whatever cell or cells see both of them you can eliminate both candidates right and so he's like okay i got a you know a green here and i got a purple here this cell sees both can't be a one or a five and this is amazing he's going to be able to solve this cell let me show you another way to solve this without coloring Okay, let's remove these colors. And if you weren't going for coloring, the other thing you could do 
is what I usually recommend is you look for single candidate strategies. There's no more hidden naked singles right now, easy pairs to do. So let's look at and focus on the ones. Like Scott said, the ones and the fives are the critical candidates in this puzzle. Where can the ones be in this puzzle right now? And so we'll mark this up and make sure we can grab all of the possibilities for where ones can be in the puzzle. We'll remove the ones that are already there. And then let's highlight those blue. Okay, what you wanna look at is you wanna look across row two, row five, and row seven. Okay, you look across those rows and let's color those orange. You might notice is that the ones are limited in these three rows to columns three, column five, and column nine, except for this one little additional cell, kind of like a fin. If it wasn't for this fin, then you'd have the ones in rows two, five, and seven limited to columns three, five, and nine. So if this fin was true, like this fin had to be a one, then this cell right there couldn't be a one, right? This fin is not true, then you'd have to have the ones in these orange cells in the column. And I'll show you what I mean. Because if you put a one right here, then you eliminate the ones in these two cells. And so now you eliminate the one right there. And so now a one's got to be one of these two cells. Uh, you'd have to have a one right here. Eliminates the one from that cell. And now you look in row two and five, you, the only place you could put a one would be in column five. And that can't happen. You can't have two ones in the same column. So you break the puzzle. And so we know if the fin is true, this can't be one. If the fin is false, then this ends up being a swordfish. And so then either way, you can remove a one from that cell. And so this is called a fin swordfish. And so the, either the fin is true, and that's not a one, the fin is false. You can remove that candidate from within the same block uh, from the column that includes the swordfish. Find out more about swordfish in this tutorial. So we know that cell cannot be a one because the finned swordfish. And since this cell can't be a one, the only other place for a one is right here. And you're gonna end up with similar logic to what Scott actually found when he was solving the puzzle. So let's go back to that main solve. So he solves this cell for a seven and he works his way up column four, nine, nine. And that has to be a five, that has to be a one. And the nice thing about coloring is Whatever you find one value, everything in that color is the same value. So he marks both of those as a one, and then he knows this now has to be your five. Uh, after that, he removes the Snyder mark saying, I got a one here in block four. I don't need to see that anymore. Uh, then he starts working on where the ones can be. Since he got a one right here, you can eliminate this one and solve for the one in row seven. And then with these two ones, he can solve for the one up there in row two, and then he can solve for the last one down here in row nine, column two. And then he removes the colors. He doesn't need them anymore. Learn more about this strategy, though, in my coloring tutorials. And then he moves on to the fives and says, OK, I got this five and these two fives. Only place for five in row one is right there. And then he looks down here in block nine and sees with this five and these two fives. Solve for five right there, which allows him to solve this cell for four. Only one place left for a five in row seven. And then with this four and a five, he can solve row seven, column one for a two. Okay, putting this five right here displaces the Snyder mark, as I call it. So displace the mark. You can solve this cell now for a five. All right. After doing that, he is kind of lost to where to go right here. And he actually starts kind of over marking. So he starts in block five and goes, okay, I need a two, three, six, nine here. And I can eliminate those possibilities. Then he comes down here to block seven and sees with this three and the four that you can put a three, four down here, which is probably where I would have looked. Uh, and it allows us to have a six, eight, nine down here in block seven. And then 
And the same over here, you got a 2, 7 in block 9 because the 6, 8, 9 is a naked triple. And allows us to have a 6, 8, 9 here also in block 9. So that he comes up to block 2. Again, a lot of marking here, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9. Usually you'll see solvers do that when they really don't have a good place of, of where to go next. But there are some much easier solves involving the 2s. So pause the video and see if you can solve for a 2 by just using cross-hatching. And I'll give you a hint, there's actually two that you can solve right now. Okay, the first one that Strauss will notice is with this two and this two, there's only one place for two in block four. And so he did notice that. And then the other one he noticed is that this two right here allowed you to solve for a seven here, and there's only one place left for a two here in block eight. He just missed that mark. So if you saw both of those, congratulations, you're really good at this. And share in the comments of how you did. Did you get one or two? All right. Now he's working his way with these twos. You got these twos here. Means there's only one place for two in block three. And then he sees with this two, you can eliminate the twos from right there. Put a two right here. And with this two and this two, solve for two here in block two. Get rid of all those extra twos. And now with these twos and this two, you can solve for two in block one. All right. So he got all those twos knocked out. After the twos, he then looks at uh, across row one and notices that this can only be a four or eight because you have a six right there. Four right there, four right there. We can solve this cell now for a six. After doing the six, he sees that with this four seven, he has a three eight pair here in block three, which means the four seven here in column nine. And he works his way down the column uh, eight here by doing a four six seven eight and then he looks in column nine and goes okay i got a three eight nine there eliminates that eight all right and he wants to fill out the rest of row four so he does that and then realizes okay i got this three eight here where can a six go well it can't go here because of the six so this actually has to be a nine. So he marks the nine, which allows him to solve for the six, eight, and nine now in block nine. After doing all that, he sees this eight now reduces this cell to a six. And with this nine, that's a three. And with the three and the nine, we got the eight to finish up column nine there in block six. And then with this eight and six, you got a four and you can solve for the seven. And with these two fours, he notices next, you can solve for a four there in block four. To solve for this four, he solves for the three down there. And then he solves for the four in block seven. All right, after knocking those out, he comes back up and sees, okay, with this six, I can actually solve that cell for a nine. He misses that he can solve this cell for a three at this point, but he does remove the nines and goes, okay, this three six is a pointing pair. This can't be a six anymore. So that's an eight. That's a six. Uh, only one place to solve them, column five. So that's going to be your eight, which allows him to solve this cell now for four. Solve this cell for an eight. Comes down here, sees, all right, that's got to be a nine. Removes the nine from block seven. And after doing that, he now comes up and sees, okay, with the six, that's got to be a three. That's got to be a six. And then he cleans up block two for a seven, nine pair. Looks across row four and sees, okay, the only cell missing is an eight. So you saw that for an eight. He needs a three and a nine here in block four. Sees the three down there. So he solves for the nine and then the three, which allows him to solve for the six and the eight to finish block seven. After doing that, he comes up to block one, puts in that three and a four. And then he sees, oh, I'm getting a six and a nine. I got a six right there. So this has to be a nine. That's a six, which allows him to solve for the seven and nine in block two. The four and a seven in block three, the three and a four in block one, and finishes up with the eight and the three in block three. Did you know Scott also creates his own Sudokus? See how I solved one of his puzzles here. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, Scott, for letting me analyze the solve on my channel, and thank you so much for watching.